it's a great place to hear because it's a lot more quiet. But we're now at, we have a lovely background of St. Auden's Church to talk about our final story about the Black Pig of Dulla, Dublin or the Dalaker, the Demon of Olaker. So this story takes place in the Liberties where we are around the 1840s. At that time, remember I was talking about how useless the Metropolitan Police were? Again, when there was Irish revolt, Irish revolution, they were great at snapping that out, but your regular Irish and Irish crimes, the regular mundane crimes, they would never actually help. And there was this big, famous, or rather say infamous uh, fugitive in Dublin at the time, a massive criminal called Oliker. And Oliker was rampaging around. There was actually a lot of accounts of him uh, attacking women and he was finally caught and put into jail because basically a crime was robbing women of their dignity you know what i mean he was a very horrendous man performing heinous crimes and finally they got him they locked him up in the black dog prison which you passed it's the corn market now back in the 1840s he's known as the black dog prison and then he was put in the vip the very important prisoner cell at the very top and he was due to be hung the next day and there was so much because everyone was so afraid of this figure and a lot of people those days like people can get bribed people can break out of prison there you can't it wasn't definitive that he was locked away for good so everyone was terrified that between that 24 hours of him being locked up and hung that he would find a way to escape <clears throat> so the warden put the largest most stockiest hulk of a guard on watch the whole night right beside oliker and through the night oliker was given out he basically he started off annoyed but as the time grew quicker towards dawn and he knew he was meeting his end he started to get desperate he was asking for poison he was asking for weapons anything that could be given to him by the guards so he could end his life on his own terms but the guard said no you've done the acts yourself you've done these crimes you deserve exactly what's coming towards you and then that annoyed Oliker then he started crying these are wailing and then he turned to screams he was now anger such frustration out of him and he started to curse the guard he said to the guard a demon will come from hell and kill you basically and this is where now the story takes a lot of different kind of routes because remember Ireland loves such a story tell. So according to the guard, <clears throat> what happened next was when Oliker did this cursing of him for a demon to come to hell and take, a, take his place, that's when a massive eruption of flames came behind Oliker and there was a portal open to hell and I set this massive demon, the demon of Oliker, and took Oliker's place. Because the morning comes, it's dawn time now, the hangman comes with the rope and his entourage towards the cell. They expect to find the guard there with Oliker in one piece, ready to meet his rifle right end. But when they open up the doors, they see the guard is unconscious on the ground, the prison cell is wide open and Oliker is nowhere to be seen. So they wake up the guard to say, what on God's earth happened here? And the guard, the guard told him about that story, about the demon stepping in, taking Oliker's place and going out into the world. Now in 1840s that's a very tall tale, like it's very hard to believe today, it was even harder to believe back then. So the guard then was kind of faced with a lot of corruption charges, so there's a lot of these theories that either the guard, the guard was bought off and he let Oliker loose and then fabricated the story, or maybe did he actually give him a weapon to end his own life and Oliker used a weapon to break free and render the guard unconscious before he fled. So the news breaks, it spreads like wildfire, everyone knows Oliker has broke out and he's on the loose again. People are absolutely mortified. In the liberties as well, people started, there was actually a, a trend of vigilantism that started because again, the police force was not helpful at all. People were so afraid to kind of walk around that people actually would walk in twos and threes. A lot of men would walk women home just to be, just to account for their safety because it was always women that was the, uh, the target for all of attacks. But then the, the bad news starts coming in. There starts to be a lot of these accounts come up in the local papers and just spread by mouth about these attacks that happened. So a lot of women said that they kind of encountered this real ghostly figure sometimes they said but a lot of figures a lot of women said they encountered this massive seven foot demonic beast with the face of a black pig so that was the most popular kind of uh, story that went around those days in the liberties then there was so much panic that kind of came from that that the that the mayor decided to section a ban on livestock basically if you had any pigs or any kind of chickens anything at all that you wanted not to be slaughtered you had to bring it into your home because they, they thought there might be a connection between that and this black pig running around. But I know all of these families had low income, so if they had a little working pig, they would want to keep them alive because that's their money. So they would bring them indoors. And I remember talking about the tenements, like you know, at one point you had all of yourself and your extended family in the one room. Now you're adding a smelly pig to the mix. So it was not a good time. I don't know what they could do because the police weren't helpful in this Oliver or Dolliver now, the demon of Oliver from the police. That's where we hear our story. It's known as the blacksmith. He lives in the liberties at that time and his wife is freshly pregnant and he comes home one day and he sees his wife bawling her eyes out in the arms of her neighbour, completely terrified to even leave the house for fear that something could happen to her. 
and Blacksmith is outraged. He says, this is our home, we should be able to do what we would like. You should be able to walk around this country freely. He says, right, I'm going to take it on myself. I will find the demon of Oliker. So he starts his whole vigilante brigade. He gets a lot of help from the, the old, other local men who want to stamp out this criminal. And they go out to the streets to look for him, but they can't find him. Then he has a big idea. It is women that is his target. He needs to kind of disguise himself. So he goes to his neighbor who we would call her a handsome woman. She was, she had a figure that wasn't unlike his own. He was a very large and charge man. And so she borrowed him a dress and she gave him a wig and she put on his makeup and she put him up in drag. And then he went out into the world by himself in the dress with his club hidden right behind him. So he's walking through the streets of the Liberty now. He thought, this is it. I will find the demon of Oliker. I will put him to his end. But still no luck. He couldn't find him. He realized then the secret ingredient was the girlish laugh. He did his <laughs> No, that's probably not the best one. But he did the girlish flair and then finally round the corner comes the demon of Oliker. He was, again, it was right. He was seven feet tall, dressed all in black with the disgusting, snarled, mangled, kind of decaying pig's face on him. And they emerge in this amazing battle that goes on for hours because one man is big, no man is bigger than the other. They can't really get the upper hand on the other one. Until finally, from all the commotion and all the screams, some of the neighbors can hear it and they rush to the blacksmith's aid. They finally overpower the Daleker. They have him on the ground, they're looking at him, they see that this person is not a ghostly demon spirit, it is a person true of flesh itself. They're looking at the pig's face, they're inspecting it, they think that is a mask, there's something under that. They, it's quite clear that this person has bought this from Butcher to conceal their identity. So they rip off the face of the pig and you might expect them to see a Daleker, but it was not Daleker or Oliker even, it was actually the guard from the prison cell of the Black Dog prison. He was so scared of these corruption charges that were being filed against him or being in, in the whispers of these coming on to him that he decided to get this black pig's face and put it on his face and commit a lot of copycat crimes to Oliker in the next coming days so that his story of Oliker being replaced by a demon from hell would get credibility and he would not face the hangman's rope. But he did. The guard was hung. But to this day, Oliker has not been found. They don't know if he's fled the country or indeed he did go to hell. But it's just from that day on, the Liberties have always been subject to a lot of different myths and stories all revolving around black pigs of Dublin. Because even though the, all of the, the, kind of the story comes to an end, they were always living in fear in case Oliver came back. Because at this point now, with this, this whole connotation of hell and heaven, he got like, he had a bigger than life kind of persona. They thought literally he could come back any time. And this story of Oliker is one of those stories of Dublin history or Irish history that has so many different kind of connotations, different meanings, different kind of ways the story ends. Because again, we've spoken it with our mouth for years before we actually wrote it down. And there's actually so many myths and legends that are home to the Liberty area that all revolve around like de demon pigs. And that all stems from Oliker. Even some uh, tourists that have been on this tour, they've come back to me and they said in their own home countries, they have stories about demon pigs as well. So it's crazy how this Oliver story the original in Ireland went, because of Irish emigrants, we go all over the world. It's crazy how we see these inklings, these same ideas and themes passed on these other cultural stories. And that's the tour. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I had such a great time. You have been amazing. Thank you. Again, we are, I'll just do the shameless.